reasons to watch, 10 great reasons to debate. Don't miss MLB Now's Top 10 Second Baseman right now, tonight at 8 Eastern. 24, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 2. You ain't seen nothing like Time for the best interview in baseball. Who's the cheapest guy on your team? Most annoying teammate to sit next to. Dude, I got one speed in this game speed. Yeah. I haven't had a salad in a long time, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> I'm going to keep that in my bragging rights for sure. One five. Are you ready? Go do it, dog. Sucker teed off on that like he knew I was going to throw a fastball. He did know. I told him. Bull Durham, starring Kevin Costner, Susan Sarandon, and Tim Robbins. Tonight, 9 Eastern, on MLB Network's Bleacher Features. All right, guys, it's time to play a little player or pretender. Oh, this, this is good. Is the game where we're going to... Deep, go for a deep dive, right? Okay. In player names. And you guys have to guess which one is fake. Now, before when I was in the makeup room, I was talking about this. I feel like Maddie's going to be really good at this. He usually is. He's a gamer. We'll see. We'll really? See. I, I don't know. Let's but, well, there's part I have of it, faith in you. There's part of it really, to be honest, I don't really care. Um, Matt is a good <laughs> gamesman as it goes. So this will be a good little session. Guaranteed. Okay, well, as long as you don't care. Here we Let's go. start with the first group of players, the first pool. Which player isn't a real name? Is it Buttercup Dickerson, Mysterious Walker, Urban Shocker, or Harry Foot? Well, I know Urban Shocker's real because I remember Urban Yeah, Shocker. I'm going with the number two on that list, and I'm going Mysterious Walker. Is uh, I'm going to say Buttercup Dixon is the fake. Uh, Harry no, Foot? it was Harry Foot. <laughs> <laughs> including when I played Winter Ball Foot. and Barrett and Kia. Uh, you know, Andrew Renteria was my bad boy. That's a great the story, Harold. Right. Do for with this game. Do right. world for one. Let's try to find on the first place one. Let's clean it up. Finally right. get Which one is in a real name? Chicken Bolt. Not be a part Budweiser. of a platoon. Bucky Snails or Stubby Clock? Well, once a week yeah, I know it's real, but the real name, it's Where not Budweiser. But what's interesting, too, because that splash that Luke Boyd made on the I'm going to say Bucky Snails is quite impressive. Right? We haven't yes. seen that Only because Bud for a while. Hey, can I tell you a quick Diego stubby clap story, in, uh, by the way? Oh, um, my God. I live for stubby clap stories. So I got down a little hand slap Maddie, when I work for the you Brewers. you got to go out there and start doing when, some stuff uh, where people go, yeah, stubby I remember clap was that. For the Cardinals, and then you get and we more had plate a pitcher, appearances. The card Is the Brewers Miami had a pitcher named Gus Gandarias? He might be able to go. Now, I know... It might so not when be the, you don't even have to go any for, when Gandaria's for a face hitter, clap, but right, it was when he the hits him, they're hit. Yeah. So it showdown. doesn't necessarily <laughs> matter. I, I punched it pretty hard. As no way. Way. But <laughs> I'm with you. I'd like yeah. to see this guy And we had a director of broadcasting, lovely guy, who go back out there and play first every day. And last I checked, I think Miami could use. And I, because I was 29 years old, I had to fire back. Yeah, but it's their real names. I was trying to think of a contending team that might want him because that might get his juices going. Yeah. I can't imagine you, but I, I don't know if no. that's necessarily okay, going to happen. Rias it might be one of those uh, things. Yeah, let's get go let's get back to the game yourself. because I'm going to get one. We could stay on right later. Okay, things might uh, happen Hubie for you at the trade deadline, but you got to be that guy Orville that you Orville. were in New York Boots, when you were in the ball or Dizzy Trout. Wow, took it by Stroud. Real. Miami, Miami uh, plays for him. Week, I mean, look, he hit 22 I'm homers last year between one San one Diego and Washington. Really uh, kind of a, a hard oh year for him. What about the Brewers? And again, I'm <laughs> putting him back care, into Bill, a platoon right? with Rowdy Tellez. I care that but I'm not Tellez getting going to play one. against right-handed pitching. That's going to get on my Max Million is playing against left-handed pitching. Boyd to DH. The Brewers always seem to need power in the middle of their lineup. That's great. So I think that's possible. Baby Dom, Jacobson, Pickles, Dillhofer, or Caesar Salato. So that could be a Pretty cool play. Uh, <laughs> and look, with the beauty of the oh, DH. Caesar Salato's got to be just fake. No. <laughs> it? 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 I was, it, it, I was, was good. Right. I was going to go. But then you start Razor Salato. And you find your way back. You did not play with Caesar Salato in Alaska. He's Whatever in that neighborhood. I'm over still. It's up to the player to actually get it done. Sierra, before you go back, can I ask a question? Who came up with the fake names? Is that you? Let's go back into the market because Bud Light's going to be in the market. Who came up with the fake names? Is that you? Let's go back into the market because let's see who else has popped up. 
respond to Whomever did care this. for us. Oh, Gary Sanchez. Yeah. I gotta give him some time. Even our yes, producer. Gary Sanchez. I, 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 pretty I have a sense for who came up. Uh, I'll start this community. one. I've got a couple of teams. <laughs> All right. And I think Steve well, there, there might actually be Jimmy some discussion Lionfoot, here with the Angels. Matt Bass um, or Pika They're looking for more productivity at that position. They got Steve the young Bo catcher, Williams. Logan O'Hoppy, who they uh, traded hey. for from right, the Phillies, so who's good, now potentially one of the best catching prospects in the game. On the occasion, he's not ready to go. Uh, they've I got Max go Stassi lined up and returning who's on a longer Pick deal. Why not compliment him with a guy that's got a little bigger power you know upside what? in Gary Sanchez. All of this so was worthwhile the Angels just to hear Matty V telling us team TV too stories. That I'm not so. quite as sold on, but I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's all worth um, it because I'm going to steal your thunder on the other team or not. All right, so, uh, I mentioned uh, Lou Boyd and the splash you made in New York. We do have some mock-ups, right, of these players, the fake players, that if they were real, this is who they were. He's kind of fallen to the Forget wayside as far as his Got catching. Lucky Snails. Oh, 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 yeah. Cliffy. Oh, Cliff Floyd, who just Sanford came on here and gave us a generic a Mike Trout video and then bolted after hashtagging them. Jimmy Lionfoot, that's uh, pretty good for Heyman. You talk about a Buster Posey yeah. that they're still trying to figure solid. out how to completely well, replace there. Well, guys, thanks for playing. Maybe next time we'll do better. I don't know. He needs another landing spot. It's terrible. You know what? It was worth seeing that Photoshop of Russo. Because he's not the guy. Caesar, you sure mean Caesar Salato. Is there a way to see yeah. the, uh, the other team for me was going to be one more time Tigers. before we get out of here? Uh, maybe, there's only one more. You know, without there Tucker Barnhart one there, maybe Will so as a complimentary piece to uh, no, 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 but in that picture, I, I think the Angels are right there. Landing spot there. Oh, Let's go back into the market. we got time for one more of these. You stop thinking about your boyfriend. The father ended up dead in a street fight. The mother was a disaster. Nice to have you with us. Who's next? What's it about? Uh, great skill set can do a lot yes. for you. Okay. JP Morosi coming up next. Some in the lineup. transactions player. we learned of this one overnight. Josh New Harris for Jesus well, Aguilar and company. That news is coming up Peacock right after this. I ask him, I go, do what's going on. And he threw out there the way he usually does with intelligence. He goes, what about Boston? Boston seems to be collecting a lot of people. And I'm the rise. But who has what it takes to shine in the show? Hear the best analysts in baseball break down the game's future top talent. MLB Network's Top 100 Prospects. Thursday, 7 Eastern on MLB Network. Some transactions that we learned of overnight. J.P. Morosi rejoining the program on this Wednesday, still from Cooperstown, New York, reveling in the Hall of Fame afterglow and with news on a new deal for Jesus Aguilar, J.P. Yes, Matt. First of all, I would love to just move the hot stove show to right here in the plaque gallery. I cannot get enough of this place. But uh, as you mentioned, some news. Jesus Aguilar, a one-year, $3 million deal with the Oakland Athletics, according to our own Mark Feinstein. The A's need to add some offense. Of course, they were second from the bottom in runs scored in the major leagues in 2022. They've lost. Sean Murphy was one of the lineup anchors for them. And it appears that Aguilar, who of course finished this past season with the Baltimore Orioles, could bat fourth for them, potentially third or fourth, high up in the lineup. This is a good signing for the A's because you look at Aguilar, you see the, the numbers for 2020 and 21. When you add those two years together, it was an OPS plus of 113 in 182 games. So he had good numbers over those two years, a bit of a down year in 2022. A nice gap for a nice stop gap, rather, at the very least for the A's before Tyler Soderstrom, their top position player prospect, who is a first baseman, arrives from AAA Las Vegas. Front office uh, doing what they can in Oakland. Yeah, but front office who's saber electrically minded. Yeah, uh, another saber electrically minded front office is in Boston, JP, where the Red Sox have acquired a middle infielder. At Alberto Mondesi. Now, this is a really interesting deal, Matt, because the Red Sox, as we know, in recent weeks, there's been so much conversation about how they will handle that position now that Xander Bogarts has moved on. How many games at shortstop will we see Kike Hernandez play in 2023? This was a need for need move. The Royals wanted to add more pitching, and candidly, Mondesi has been promising at times, but also inconsistent and injured. He had an early season ACL injury in 2022 that knocked him out for the balance of the year. The expectation is, Matt and Bill, that Mondesi should be able to come back and be available to play around opening day of 2023. However, just given his injuries in the past, he is going to need consistent days off. And so we might see Kike Hernandez playing a combination of center field 
and shortstop. And the other part of, of last night's transactions for the Red Sox was that Matt Barnes, who was up until last night the longest tenured member of the Red Sox roster, was designated for assignment. Of course, a native New Englander from the great state of Connecticut. Um, he was the player they had to move off the roster to make room for the newly signed Adam Duvall. So a significant transaction for the Red Sox really in two different ways last night, adding Mondesi in the Taylor trade and then also having to DFA someone who's been a part of their World Series team back in 2018. You know, a lot of people have been critical of the Red Sox this offseason for the, uh, you know, the big splashy headline reasons, Bogarts, etc. They've done some nice little sneaky moves, I think, including Justin Turner, the, the, the moves that you just mentioned, J.P., you know, they're not going to get bulldozed this year in Boston. I wouldn't be surprised if they sneak up on some people this year. Uh, hey, lastly, let's go to Twitter for this to set you up on this final note. Uh, John Heyman putting this out on Twitter. Astros interviewed Guardians assistant GM James Harris for their open GM job, along with longtime baseball man Bobby Evans and Braves exec Dana Brown, three of the finalists. Are the, these the only three that we know of, JP? And what can you add on the Astros GM search? Not the only finalists. And in fact, uh, yesterday, as first reported by Jesus Ortiz in the uh, Houston Chronicle, a, a very interesting story about where that could be going with the Houston Astros. Brad Osmus is among that group uh, who could be potentially uh, moving into that GM spot. Now, Brad Osmus, we spent a lot of time in the last couple of days talking about uh, his former teammate in Jeff Kent. And Brad Osmus, interestingly, of course, we had viewed him as a possible GM uh, back early in his career before he became the Tigers field manager and eventually the Angels. Uh, so interesting that Brad could be moving back into a front office role. Of course, he was with the A's and the coaching staff in your interview yesterday with Mark Kotze, but uh, Brad Osma is now potentially viewed as an executive at the GM level with the Houston Astros. As we know, great baseball mind, Dartmouth graduate, so certainly Brad Osma is part of that conversation. I would double back and mention a bit more on Dana Brown because we talk about the Atlanta Braves and why they won the World Series in 2021. Dana Brown's draft picks were a huge reason why. He also drafted Michael Harris, advocated for him to be called up early this season. Spencer Strider, Austin Riley, all that homegrown talent. Matt and Bill, Dana Brown, one of the best evaluators in the game, period, and is viewed as a future GM, whether it's in Houston now or sometime in the future. Dana Brown, I believe, will be a GM and a great one at that. Yeah, Bob Nightingale of USA Today, Houston Chronicle, they're calling Dana Brown the front runner in this process. So, JP, good information on this Wednesday. Thank you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Red Sox here, yeah. and I, I want to get your thoughts on what I mentioned, that they've, they've done smaller transactions. You know, it's not the sexy thing, but uh, they're not as bad. They haven't been as inactive, let's put it that way, right. as people think. And I said earlier that I've been a little bit confused on what they've been doing. Look, Bogart's leaving. Um, it kind of bothered me, concerned me. Locking Devers up. Okay, you got a guy over there that I still think, and I know he's had some pretty good years. I still don't think he's had his best year yet. I think it's very interesting to look at Devers, how he goes forward. I love the fact that this kid likes to go out there and compete and play every day. But the, the, the thing that troubles me a little bit about the Red Sox, because I think it could be an all-or-nothing type year. Things work out or they don't. I don't think that there's a 81-81 in their forecast. Um, it's going to be better than that or it's going to be worse than that. I don't think that they're just going to uh, hold it. Mondesi, the talent and everything that's there could be that big hit or miss. If he's playing right, okay, we leave Kike out there in center field. I'm still a little concerned about the idea of them talking about him playing shortstop because it looks like he's going to play in the WBC as a center fielder. And if you're playing in the WBC as a center fielder and you're missing all that shortstop time to get reacquainted with the infield position, that's troubling to me. I don't want to see a mix or match type thing go on. I'm hoping, and I know they're hoping, minus he comes in, he's healthy, he's ready, their shortstop, Devers, is going to play third, and then I think you have a head start on things in the future. I can't wait to see the Pocota win totals, uh, what Vegas thinks, what they think at BetMGM on what the Red Sox uh, preseason win total is going to be. They're going to be fascinating to watch. Let's take a break. Uh, we'll do it with this photograph in 1987. Ooh. Yeah, Bill Ripken was ready for the Grande Ligas as a Rochester Red Wing. Yee. Ready to rake with the Black Franklins. <laughs>
<laughs> We're going to talk some uh, minor league tales from the dugout with the author of a book by the same name. Tim Haggerty joins the stove coming up next.